Okay, we have a little bit of a different type of uh, composition to do here today. It's a, uh, I wouldn't say it's a great re request card or something like that, but uh, uh, one of our customers, Shirley, hello Shirley, sent me a photograph um, of her son that enjoys kayaking, okay? All right, so what we're going to do, he is <laughs> in the photograph, he is kayaking through um, kind of like a, I don't know, it's like a little, um, or not little, but a, uh, a, what am I trying to say here? It's a, it's like a, it's like a drainage um, um, pipe, you know, it's a, like a metal pipe with a, um, you know, uh, I don't know, what do you call it, those ribs that are kind of going around in concentric circles, okay, so it's like you're going off into the distance, and it's a pretty cool um, visual, and we're going to see if we can come up with something here, so what I'm doing right here is I'm making um, the template that I'm going to um, use to tone my scene, okay, so this is a little circle here, okay, that I just used from a hole punch. I don't know what that is. It's like a one-inch hole punch or something like that. And this area down here is going to be, um, you know, the, the water, basically. And then we have these concentric circles coming like this, okay. And the light is at the end of the tunnel right in here. All right, so this is going to be my model. How many times do we ever do something like this in one of these scenes? Almost never. Um, but let me get a... Oh, let me see. I need a pair of scissors. I'll try to put this, uh, the photograph, in the, uh, in the video somewhere. Um, I'll download that. So if you're watching this, you've probably seen the photograph. Okay. So anyways... Um, what we're going to have, for me, the dilemma is getting this area down here, the water, different from the surrounding area. So I'm going to be doing kind of a series of um, masks, okay? Well, I don't know about series, maybe two masks. All right, so let me see. So the water's going to be different this way, and then I'm going to cover the water and blend up this way. Oh. I think I should have, well, maybe not. Maybe I was thinking maybe this area right here should have been on that. But I, I think this is the way it's going to have to go. Okay, so I'm going to be doing some masking this way, and we're going to be laying down some tone this way, okay? And we have to have this covered up because that's where there's going to be a lot of light. Okay, so that's going to be taped to that. So I'm going to have tones coming in from here up into this area. And then I'm going to cover this like this, including that top part. And we'll put tones from here down to this, okay? So the, the water is going to be different. The reason why I just don't have like a circle down here, you know, because the water is going to be a, a different hue or a different value scheme than the surrounding um, interior all right. So it's a little, you know, I don't know. I wouldn't say it's confusing or something like that, but it, you know, I, I don't know. I have to conceive of a, a little bit uh, differently than, uh, uh, you know, what what we normally do. Okay, so this is just a piece of glossy cardstock. You can do it on matte cardstock or whatever. Now the thing that's going to be a little bit of a specialty type of thing is I have a compass here. And it has a universal um, adapter here that you can put any type of pen into, provided it fits into this adapter little area. Okay, a formidable uh, tool for for you. Okay, um, I don't know. It's one of those things I, you know, for me, I I recommend it. You know, just to do um, geometric shapes and whatnot. And uh, I don't know. It just does wonders. I've been using mine for. Gosh, I got it. I got mine in high school. Okay, I think it was 1980. What was it? 
It's probably like 83 or something like that. I was a junior in high school, and I needed that uh, universal adapter, and I got it, and I had the wrong compass for it because it didn't fit, but I, I my, one of my best friends was a... Uh, he was in drafting for several years, and he had several compasses. And, uh, you know, he knew where that adapter kind of fit. I'll show you that uh, construction when I get to it. Okay, so anyways, I'm laying down um, gray ink, okay? Now, it's going to be going, for the most part, from dark to light up that way, okay? Um, I don't know, I, made, I probably made it a little bit too dark right there. I'll try not to go too much darker than that, though. But, yeah, I'm usually not working around a mask like this, but we have to on this one. There's a lot of things that, uh, you, know, you know, my process is going to be quite different here from what I normally do, normally have to do. But how many times are we doing, you know, am I stamping a scene where someone's inside a pipe? You know, never. I guess a cave, you know, I guess, this is, a, I don't know, I guess it's kind of a version of a cave, you know. Um, right? Just no rocks, and we were just doing a bunch of caves, so cave lighting, you have a little bit darker here, and lighter in there, you know? No rocks or anything like that. But we will have some texture in there, though. All right, now look at this. Um, my gel pen right here that I was kind of doing that on, I guess I should have used a uh, permanent marker or something like that instead, but uh, oh well. All right, so that is that. Now we're going to mask this way here. I should really tape this one to this piece right here, but oh, I don't know. I don't have any tape on me, so okay. You think I would have some tape in my studio, right? When do I? I don't. I never use it though, so I hardly ever use it. Okay, so I'm working around in concentric circles like this. It doesn't have to be, you know, super evenly applied, needless to say, you know, uh, because we're going to be doing some different things on here still. Okay. I don't know. This is all kind of theory. <laughs> yeah. Anytime you do something like vastly different, way. Now this, this is the type of thing that you stampers should be kind of excited about. Not in terms of subject matter, but just doing something very different. Um, I don't know, stampers to me, you tell me, I mean, it, you're always looking for like what's new, right? You can't wait to do new things, can't wait to learn new things and whatnot, you know. Can't wait to buy new things, you know, that's some of the most fun part about our, our hobbies, no matter what you do, you know, if you're a, someone's a fisherman, you know, or something like that, you know, oftentimes, you know, you don't, you might have, uh, you know, all the rods and reels that uh, you need, but, uh, it, you know, it's not like if you walk into a store or a convention, uh, you know, just, uh, you wouldn't be interested in, you know, seeing the latest gadgetry and whatnot. Going to the boat show. <laughs> All right, so anyways, do you see what I mean here? This is kind of a, you know, it's a little bit of a, you know, a kind of a portal into a different dimension. You know, there's my uh, hard line right there. It's a little bit too hard, so let's go in and kind of get rid of that uh, thing right there. I probably should have been using a piece of copy paper you know, over, um, you know, a piece of cardstock like that. Cardstock's just, I don't know, it's a little bit thicker, so it's a little bit easier to hold, and when I'm going over the top of it, it's not like, you know, like fraying, you know, like, you know, just one little piece of paper, and you know, it keeps folding back or something like that, so, um, anyway. All right, now the photograph was, you know, it's um, inside this thing, so it's kind of void of color. It's largely monochromatics, but um, I thought I would go with a gray and then a black. So we'll see how that goes, okay? Kind of 
being careful not to uh, go around um, that portal too much, okay, because it is going to be my source of light. This might be kind of a different looking uh, thematic scene, okay? And it is different in terms of the structuring for me, in terms of the composition, but you can look at it as like something that's a vastly different um, project. But, okay, now it is in terms of uh, the absence of imagery in here, okay? But let's look at what it is in terms of something very similar to what we're doing, okay? I've been doing this little thing like a moonlight, right? And here it is over the waves or something like that, you know, the seaside cove that I've been using in the last few scenes, okay? And largely, when I talk about vignetting, it's darker on the outside edge and lighter in the middle. So you get dark to light by the source of light right there, right? I could still put a seaside cove right down there. I could put, put a couple islands in here or something like that. Clouds above, and it's a scene, right? So this is kind of in a way, it's what's going on kind of over or under the scenes that you're already doing. Dark to light, you know, light source, dark to light. You know, so this is like a vignette, okay? All right, so that is that. Let's, let's go on. Let's start developing our darker tones. Let's go into black, okay? Like that. I don't really need to mask off um, that little area in there because I'm not going to go towards that area. I'm going to leave it largely um, as is, okay? Because when you move into the darker tones, they're kind of more perimeter oriented, okay? Perimeter applied. See that? Get from one side to the next. All right. I think we can develop it a little bit more. Um, we can have a stronger um, kind of separation between, um, you know, the pipe and the water. Okay. So let's go a little bit stronger. Kind of like so. Sometimes when you start adding tone down, you get kind of a super saturation of this surface right here. So if I'm wiping, sometimes I'm wiping ink off, okay? So that's why you kind of tap it on, where you kind of build up the inks in like tiny little kind of microscopic uh, little beads of, uh, you know, moisture, you know, ink. So tap you know, to build. All right, and then you kind of wipe to blend, okay? Whatever you want. So, um, I did add, uh, add quite a bit of the gray, so it does make it easier for me to, um, you know, kind of add something down and blend it out. If the paper is really dry, if you go like, like this, okay, and you try to blend it out, it's, it's set, okay? So that's what's kind of good about um, laying down. Good kind of base coat, okay? Even though my base coat wasn't super light, which I typically do, um, you know, because this is just a monochromatic, you know, scene here. I might add a little bit of um, hue to it, okay? I mean, color. We'll see. So, you know, just to give it a little bit more character than just kind of your neutral gray, okay? Maybe we'll make it a warm gray or a cool gray or, I don't know, or both. It'll be, I think, kind of subtle though. We'll we'll see what, what you know what it looks like when we get there though. Okay. All right. So then it's kind of coming along like that. Just looks looks like we're in a cave or something right now, without those concentric circles that will lay in there. 
Okay, so that is that. Now let's go back to this mask like this. Okay. You notice know, so I didn't make it even from this side to the next. You know, this side's this line's a little bit higher, this line's a little bit, you know, kind of lower on here. I didn't want it perfectly symmetrical. I, I thought that would create too much kind of, uh, you know, visual tension having it too symmetrical. Okay, wanted to have a little bit off center just for some variety. You know, there's already going to be, you know, heavy, heavy static um, kind of formatting to this. So. Kind of adjusting accordingly. Okay, adding this down like so. Doing too much heat setting on this. My uh, my mat I think is warped a little bit underneath there. This green mat. I need to hold up my things when heat setting. You know, on this mat right here. Okay, so when this ink starts to dry a little bit more, it starts to set up more. And when it sets up more and dries, that means you can apply more ink because it's going to be transferring over a little bit easier. You want it to be kind of moist when you're doing your blending, but then you want it to be kind of dry too. Um, when you want to build up inks a little bit more, or a lot more, you know, it'd make things just, you know, um, you know, just so much darker on it. And I do want to make some, you know, areas on this quite a bit darker. I also, I don't know, I it's it's looking a little bit too kind of smoothly applied, so I might want to kind of just put this on. And just, you know, come up here and, you know, make some areas a little bit darker. Oh, I'm kind of wiping off ink there, so <laughs> I'll just kind of blend that in a little bit more. Okay, something like that. You know, I don't know. It just, it gives it a little bit more variation because of the strong, you know, super uber um, symmetrical formatting to this piece. All right, I'm starting to get a few fingerprints on this because it is kind of real moist around the perimeter like that. Okay. Okay, now we have that. Let's move on and let's mask this off. Okay, this doesn't look like water at all, okay? So we need to add some texturing to it. All right, so a water pattern stamp is the uh, kind of the, the natural um, solution for that, okay. I've gone with different impressions of it. Some of them are darker, and some of them are drier and thus lighter, okay? Now we have this kind of horizontal formatting to that, right? Now, we have to kind of reiterate that. We don't have to, but it will look better. If we reiterate this type of horizontal, um, I don't know, con pattern configuration, whatever you call it, okay? You take some extra ink, and you do these streaks into that area, okay? Like this, okay? It's not going to be streaks, though, going across there if we just fill the whole thing in. So you kind of have to, you know, put them here and there, you know, so you can see the streaks. If the whole area is filled in, you can't really see them, okay? 
<laughs> I'm removing ink again. I, I should really heat set this, I think. I usually don't heat set too much dye inks, though. I usually like them just to set on there. But, you know, and I like to uh, be able to build them up and blend on there, but I don't know, maybe I should. some kind of some circles going just within the shadows like this too all right hmm all right time to heat set I I think it about I want to tint this a little bit for go extreme on that. I don't want it just completely dry, I don't think. Okay, I want there to be a little bit of a, you know, a tinge of moisture um, in there, which I think will help. Okay, what we'll do is we'll get a little bit of antique linen, distress ink, okay. The super light colors, you know, in inks. I mean, I'm never using those for impressions. I have a pad for it, but uh, I, I'm never buying another pad for those ones again. The inks that I just, I'm not going to be making impressions from. Okay, I'm just completely removing that ink there. That wasn't heat set long enough. Here, let's go a little bit more. much for the tinge of moisture. I guess we don't want any moisture in there. I, I don't know. I, I did add a lot of gray and a lot of black onto this scene, so. All right, let's try this again. Okay, so I was going to add some of this down. I'm really shredding my uh, paper towel here, too. Just from the amount of uh, kind of streaking I was doing on this side. It left kind of crumbs all over. <laughs> Paper towel crumbs. Okay, here we go. Okay, so it's giving me a little bit more of a grayish tinge, right? Or, I don't know, warmish tinge of color, okay? Now let's do something else down here. Let's take some distressing tumble glass. So kind of warm, well, and we'll play it off a little bit of cool down here, okay? And we don't need too much. I just put a little drop like that. Okay. So it's like smaller than my pinky finger. It's like half a pinky finger. 
All right, and we'll just kind of dab it down here and tint this area down here. Any place that you've kind of retained a little bit of the white of the paper, you can kind of see it. Boy, I needed a really... My paper was really soaked. Okay, this is really removing off a lot of that ink. Okay, so anyways, you see those two color schemes, right? Mm. It's color schemes, but it's also temperature schemes, okay? We have warm and cool in there. All right. Okay, so that being said, I've removed, you know, some inks off of here, so let's go and kind of reintroduce that. Going and adding the black of that, it shouldn't remove, you know, the, the antique linen and blue. It'll, you know, you'll still be able to see those, those two colors and two different temperatures in here. It's subtle, you know, but it's there. All right. Okay, so the fun begins. Let's get that um, compass, okay? And I'm going to have to try to find center on here. All right, so I'm guessing the center will be, let's see, it's roughly about right there. Okay. So here's what I have. This is my white paint pen in a universal holder, okay? Adapter, holder, whatever you call it, um, on my compass, okay? And that thing is held in by this little rod right here that goes into this part right here. and you know, in your compass, um, oh, I, I don't know where my tip is. I, okay, this normally goes into that compass part, right? See, this part can come out, and usually in a compass, this little rod here um, comes in these sets, okay, and that's what this um, gets attached to right here. And this thing just goes in and out. You screw it in and out, and this little thing goes in and out, and it holds whatever you want to put in there, so... It's great for media. Okay, so anyways, um, let me see. I want to make sure this is. You got to get your paint pen flowing now. All right. Now this is kind of wet in here, and I'm going with this paint pen on this, so I'm hoping that it. Uh, I'll get be able to get a good flow going, but we'll see. Okay, so. Um, should I start large and go small? Okay, so these are going to be concentric circles, but we're going off in perspective, so each circle that I, you know, add on here is going to have to get smaller and smaller and smaller as it moves down this way, so. Uh, okay, no better time than the present. Let's just start off, okay? Now I'm going right down here towards the water. Here, okay. Uh, now this one, I don't know, it doesn't reach over here, so there's nothing over here, so there's my tip. All right, I'm sorry, you can't see. My hand's going to be in the way in a lot of this, but I'll try to <laughs> pick it up and so you can see a little bit better periodically. <laughs> All right. Going like this. Like that, okay. So that's my f kind of first measurement. Oh, I guess I should have started out here first. This one will be a little bit larger. Okay. Now there's going to have to be some adjustments made as I do this, of course. And I am not measuring. Okay, I'm not going to do that. This is the first time right down here. This meets right down there. Okay, so I got a little tiny bit of it. Okay. I got a little lint on the end of my uh, paint pen tip, so you got to kind of wipe that off and keep it clean. All right, now, next circle might be a little bit smaller. And 
also, I don't think I'm going to want to keep these completely um, unbroken. Well, I don't know. What I mean by that is I'm not sure if I just want to go for a complete circle like that. I don't know. I guess it is in the photograph. What these represent is that little ridge of light um, that's, that's on those pipes. Okay, so I'm going to, like I said, there's going to have to be adjustments made. I'm going to have to add some tone over the top of these because, I don't know, it doesn't look real. See, I'm adding the highlight, but we also need the shadow, so we're going to have to add that in. And it might entail spray sealing this and going back in with like a um, like an alcohol marker or something like that sort. Okay, it's getting real thin there. Maybe I put that. Really thin line, okay. I don't, see, I don't want the concentric circles so close that, uh, you know, they basically merge into one, which might happen. This is a point seven millimeter paint pen, so it's giving me a reasonably sharp line, considering, you know, the paint, you know, it's big and thick. Okay, I think that's as far as I dare go, okay? Like you're going into the twilight zone, I know. So weird. Okay, so that is the, the movement into there. Now we're going to have to do a lot of um, tone um, within these concentric circles, and I think I'm going to have to spray seal that just so we can do that. But before I do that, I think I'm going to let this dry too overnight. I think. I think I'm going to do the kayaker. Put some kind of tone around that too as I go out. So, a lot of assessments to be made with this one. Um, well, we'll get it figured out. Okay, I think I'm going for a little bit more water texture. So, you can reestablish, you can kind of texturize, tone in, texturize, tone in, you know. Um, stamping. And doing whatever process you do, it doesn't have to be so linear, um, kind of a, a process. You can always go back in and do, add something more in there that might have been removed. You can make adjustments, you know, I don't know. 
you can go back to colors that you've used before. I've used, you know, black. If I want to put a little gray in here, you know, you can do something like that. All right, so here's a little bit of black, though. I'm going over some of this paint pen just to kind of give a little tint to some of the paint pen. Okay, it's just... It's just too light in some areas, okay? So you can make it a darker line, right? By you're tinting the ink on there, basically, okay? And it's acrylic, so the dye-based ink is kind of, you know, it's, it's influencing it. Um, it isn't blacking it out completely, which is good. So you just want it tinted, okay? All right, so let's go back to, good thing we have our masks here. This mask. Okay. Now I know I'm masking off those sides, but we do we do want you know somewhat of a a defined delineation between that you know that pipe and the water area. They're just they're different substances, they're different surfaces. So even though they kind of might merge a little bit visually in the darkness in some areas. They'll still be a little bit different because of those masks that we have employed. Okay. That's so far. Okay, so anyways, um, yeah, it looks a little bit better. Um, we have a little bit more of a sense of distance now that I've toned these ones out. Actually, that looks pretty good. Uh, let me use a little bit more of this on the outside. Like that. Okay, there we go. That's looking a little better, huh? Okay, so anyways, we'll um, let this set up and dry, and then we'll come in and do some kind of uh, some pen and ink work in here tomorrow. We'll do some, the thing that'll really bring this together is some uh, pigment ink right in here to really kind of emphasize that, you know, the glowing light opening in there. And then um, a few little touches down here with some, uh, lighting as well so okay so anyways fun stuff and tomorrow will be step two <laughs> okay we're back the next day everything on here is nice and dry we'll see how set the um the inks are but let's grab some different pens and i'll grab some gray values here these are all alcohol-based pens, um, and now I'll grab as many values as I seem to have. Some of these are cool grays, some of them are kind of warm grays. This one's a brownish gray. Maybe use the brownish gray for the, um, the area that we added, the uh, antique linen. But I think this is ready to go. All right. So anyways, these are very light 
tones for the most part, light values, okay? That one's going to be the darkest, and, oh, I don't know. Oh, that one's a little bit too kind of peach, fleshy colored. Okay, this one's a little bit of a, like a blue value. And let's take a look at this one. This one's kind of a neutral, I don't know, maybe a 20% or something like that. Maybe a 30%, yeah, when you add it in full. All right, so we'll use all of these, I think. All right, now, one of the things that we're doing is we're going to try to create, I don't know, just this depth so that these um, concentric circles look a little bit more, oh, I don't know, purposeful or whatnot, rather than um, just something that's been applied over the top of um, an existing value range, okay, from light to dark, okay. I mean, they're, you know, it looks flat. So what we need to do is we need to add in some extra tone, okay. So what I'll be doing is I'll add in some of these gray values right next to that um, line, okay. Now, the lines are like this. Let me show you, see if I can show you here and explain it. Okay, they're like this. And what I'm going to try to do is I'll add these values like this, okay? And I'm going to try and transition them from dark to light like that, okay? So I'm not filling in everything, so I want to create a little bit of a, a value changes like this, so... Um, the white lines will represent kind of this little edge um, where it's capturing the light, okay? Because this um, this is like, I don't know what you call it, it's like corrugated steel or something like that. It's, it's wavy, like, you know, like this, okay? It's like one of those types of pipes. It's not like smooth on the inside, it's like metal. So, we'll do that. Now, what I'm doing right now, it doesn't look like it's doing anything. So, I don't know, maybe it's worthless, maybe not, but what I'm doing is I'm getting kind of this um, layer of um, gray uh, alcohol ink down. Okay, this is pretty good. What I'm noticing is that this acrylic ink isn't dissolving, so going over it like this as much as I want, it's not rubbing the... Um, the acrylic paint off, okay? So it means I'm free to apply here. I was kind of being a little bit gingerly and kind of being careful about it. So that's, that's probably one of the differences between this um, type of paint pen and maybe like a gel pen, okay? The gel will dissolve, but this one right here, it's not going back into solution and coming off. But that being said, if you have a gel pen only, you can try it, but just be a little bit more careful about, you know, applying some tone over the top of it or applying, um, you know, alcohol. Um, I don't know. It, this thing, it says marks on anything. So it says that, you know, it's strong covering, covering force, sunproof and waterproof. Well, it's alcohol proof too. Pigment ink, okay. It, well, I don't know, it says pigment ink. It's an acrylic based, oh, it's an acrylic based pigment ink? I don't know. I, I, I see it as an acrylic paint pen, like acrylic paint. All right, now let's try this darker one right here. And let's see if we can get a little bit more um, contrast and visibility going with this one. Like I said, we don't have to do it everywhere. You don't have to go all around in that whole concentric circle. You kind of just add it here and there. Maybe in an area. Okay, I guess I can go even darker. I always test out, I like building things up from light to dark because you can get the gist of something when you start off with a lighter tone, a lighter value of a given hue, okay? And then you can just keep 
building upon that, but that's better than kind of doing something that's, you know, too harsh right off the bat and not being able to kind of undo it. I mean, you, you can't remove, you know, some media. You can kind of, I don't know, lessen the impact of it. Now, you can still do that. Like, if I get something too dark over here, maybe I make something else dark around it so that, by contrast, it looks a little bit lighter, but... It's always, it's just so much easier just to build things up gradually, okay? And, uh, just to add on accordingly, okay? Now I'm adding these little streaks. I'm kind of doing these little hatch marks like that. You can't see it too much because underneath it's just, you know, it's darker than white naturally. So what I'm doing is I'm just laying down a gray that's a little bit darker than the gray inks, the, the dye-based inks that have already been applied, okay? So, again, this is kind of adding a kind of a thick base layer of alcohol that's down here, okay? Now, alcohol does dissolve alcohol, so I can go in here with, here's this brown one, brownish gray, and we can add that in. So when I do this, wherever I add that, it's kind of dissolving the alcohol ink underneath it. So, that being said, it's kind of blending in nicely with that other alcohol ink. This is kind of subtle too, but I, I do see this brown on here. It's just giving it kind of a warm, grayish tinge in here. All right. All right, now, I don't know. I've been avoiding it here, but let's go on. I don't want to go to black. That's just too much. Let's see if I can find a darker gray. I have a couple different sets of uh, alcohol pens. Let's get some of these pens I'm not going to use very often. Some of these I probably never used before. But when these pens are like, you know, certain colors are... Um, like this one I haven't used before. It has a little buildup of stuff on it. Um, when these pens are only like, I don't know, like 50 cents each, and I just, some uh, manufacturer got in touch with me last night. This never happens to me, but I don't know, it happened last night. Someone says they, uh, they're a subscriber to the channel, um, and, uh, they're a, a seller of you know, these types of pens right here. But their pens, it was like, I don't know what it was. It was like um, 50, uh, 40, I don't know, 30 or 40 pack or something like that. For the entire pack, $10. <laughs> I don't know, I don't, it, it was like nine something. You know, these pens are getting cheaper and cheaper. Oh my God, this is really dark right here. Okay, so this color right here is really dark, so I'm laying down some of it in here, okay? But we're working on glossy cardstock, so we can lay this down on here, like so. All right, it's a little bit harsh, but then you go back in with a lighter tone, and you just blend that out, okay? You're dissolving your marks in there, so um, I'm not an expert by any means with really anything, but uh, kind of I know the uh, the general concept of media and how it, you know certain types of inks can be manipulated once they're already been applied. And alcohol inks on glossy cardstock is one of them, which is really nice because you can of influence what's already been laid down. Okay, now you can't do that with certain things, like, you know, apparently that's like acrylic paint pen, that's that's set, you know, so don't do something like that with that, but let's go in here and add some of these kind of these ribs in here. Okay, so I see I'm laying that down. It's very, very uh, you know, you know, it's less visible up here in the darkness, but as I come and I apply some of this down in this, it's pretty harsh, okay? 
So we'll just come in with our blender pen or a lighter color, which acts as a blending uh, tool. And we'll get that, um, we'll get that um, kind of, I don't know, a little bit more mellow, although it looks pretty good. I wouldn't lay this down and kind of let it set out overnight. I, that might be a little bit too long and the ink might get a little bit more set, but uh, I think you can manipulate it, but it's just so much easier to kind of blend out. You know. Now this is just, you know, it's my lighter, although it's not real light, lighter than the one I just used, gray. So that is the one that I'm going to blend the darker tone with from the previous marker. It's kind of taking on a little bit more of a kind of painted look in some areas, you know, with that texturing, which I kind of like. It's a little bit looser instead of so kind of stiff and static with that, uh, you know, um, compass, compass, um, <laughs> applied visual. Okay, let's add some of this out here. Really kind of blending it in where the uh, the water meets um, kind of the side of the pipe. Just add a little bit too much up there, so let me grab my actual blender pen and remove some of that. Let me bring in a few little highlights back in here. I can remove some of the um, alcohol ink, but you can't remove any of the, uh, the dye-based ink, you know, because this isn't dissolving any dye-based ink with the alcohol in it. All right. Okay, now I've done this before. In a test, this is where kind of all this I don't know, kind of playing around comes back into play. Um, but I'll add in some additional um, ink on here in the form of some brilliance ink. These that'll dry on here just fine. But let's go and let's add a little bit of fine tuning into this. I think I'm going to add a little bit of 
tone into the figure as well to make them a little bit more front lit, okay? I'll add a little bit of color to them too. Oh, I don't know, how about green? Something like that. Just kind of making them a little bit more of a silhouette, a little bit. Okay, now let's add in some little reflections coming off of the water. And things like this, little details and whatnot. Um, these are the types of things that I believe are really fun to do. And really can add a lot of um, expression and uh, oh, I don't know. Wonderment, I guess you could say. It kind of it, it can bring little areas to life, and maybe the whole scene in many ways. I mean, you add these little sparkly lights down in here, and it it just changes the emotional character of a piece at times. See, like that. All right, now I'm adding a few more up here because that's the lighter area, and then as you move back into the shadows, it, you, can, you know, that little highlighting becomes a little bit more selective because you have less light, you know, getting back into that area. But you have these little kind of flashes of uh, uh, specular light, light that's brighter than white. Okay? Yeah, I mean, it, there's so much more dimension to it. Okay, now let's see. I'll come into some of these um, little ribs and just add a, you know, a little bit of highlighting on some of them. Like that. See that right there? I mean, it's just, isn't it kind of, it gives you this sense of like a, a shimmer or glimmer or whatnot on these um, pieces right here. So we're saying that they're, by doing this, we're saying that they're dimensional, not flat. Naturally, everything that we do is flat. You know, we're working on a two-dimensional surface right here. Um, but this gives the illusion, a greater illusion of, um, you know, a three-dimensional, a three-dimensional whatever aspect of the uh, of the forms within the piece and if you look all the way around you okay no matter what you're doing you're sitting there at your uh, computer screen or your tablet um, there's these little shimmering even if you're sitting there in the darkness you'll see these little areas of reflected light Everywhere around you, on your pencil, on your mouse, um, on your edge of your device, okay? There's always these little bits of uh, lighting. Okay? And if you remove all that, you know, it probably things wouldn't look as dimensional that way. So it's happening in, you know, life too. It's not just a kind of a, you know, some sort of visual statement, um, you know, for the sake of art or whatever. 
this is just kind of, you know, mimicking that uh, lighting uh, type of scheme. All right, now I don't have lines in here, but I'm just kind of going along with the, uh, the whole idea of this, you know, kind of concentric circles and the... Uh, I would just want to suggest that um, you know, those lines continue down this way, or the, the, that ribbing. You know. All right, so that's what we have there. Looks pretty busy, doesn't it? There. But again, this is the way it looks. That's the way it looks from distance. find some of this, knock some of this down a little bit. Some of it's a little bit too bright. You kind of go back into it. And... All right. Okay, let's add in some Black Brilliance ink, okay. I'm adding the Black Brilliance ink, the pigment ink over this, because um, I, I just don't think dye-based ink sticks very well to um, alcohol inks, okay. You can just, it, I mean, it, you can probably tone in a little bit, but it's just, it's just so much easier with an ink that's sitting on the surface, okay. And the, uh, the dye-based inks, and like I said, they're water-based, and if you put them over oil, I mean, uh, if you put them over um, alcohol, it just doesn't it just doesn't adhere very well. All right, so what are we doing with this? We're going to go with the four corners right here, just to kind of transition things a little bit more. And to really go for some uh, kind of impact as far as um, potential values here. You know, we can get quite a bit darker using a pigment ink than a dye based ink at times. saturation on the outside. You can see those the lines um, are a little bit more varied from light to dark. You can see down here, see that transition going through there. Maybe I can kind of bring it through a little bit or two like this. It kind of makes this interior seem a little bit kind of more weathered to kind of putting, you know, some of this type of thing over the top of it. I don't want it looking so clean, you know, and sterile. OK, 
Okay. Well, that looks okay as is. <laughs> this this composition and uh, photograph cracks me up, but in a good way. I think it's I don't know, it's just some funky looking setting right here. Okay. We have some white pigment ink. We went dark to lighter down here, right? We're just start every time I start tapping it, we're going from the outside in. But if we're working with the opposite thing, we're starting from the inside out, okay? Because we're working with light. Okay, let's start them up with a clean uh, applicator here. All right, and we'll start from the uh, inside. Tapping it down. Don't go like tap, 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 tap. Okay. You gotta tap it for a while like this and kind of just concentrate it. And then as you do that, it becomes drier and drier on here. And then you start moving out. Okay. Don't do it in like even increments like one, two, three, four. Okay. It's more like tapping for a while. Because you're, what you're doing is you're drying it on here too. More ink is coming off. And then when you get less ink on there, then you start kind of transitioning it. See, so, yeah, so I'm kind of working in to out, in to out. Pretty, I mean, pretty soon it's going to get very dry on here. Then you can kind of put it wherever, okay? But when it's wet, really concentrated in here. All right, so see this? What I'm doing is I'm adding this down here, and then I'm adding it around the kayaker. But some of it is going on the kayaker, so it looks like they're... Part, look at the paddles in the light, right? looks a little bit more kind of dreamy looking you know when you kind of have this lighting kind of uh, you know coming out of here like that it kind of diffuses things as well so I mean we went for um, a transition of dark to light down there okay and it is transition but you can kind of give it an extra boost by creating that transition from the inside out using white. So you transition it from the outside in using dark. Now you can do the opposite and complementary um, application, which is working the lights. And, you know, while the black incorporates the shadows, the end of the piping with the shadows there, the white in turn can, you know, potentially incorporate the, in, you know, the opening here with white. So perimeter black, interior white, dark to light. Or light to dark, you know, accordingly. All right. Sometimes I think I'm getting a little bit too much, so what I do is I start kind of wiping it like that. You know, during my kind of application, maybe I'm removing more than an application, but you can kind of, uh, you know, remove. Now the Brilliance Ink will dry on here, but it doesn't dry so fast that you can't manipulate it, so you get the best of both worlds. You can kind of have a, an ink that stays wet or manipulation, but then will air dry or be heat set very easily. All right. some of this pigment ink in here too just to kind of lighten things up and kind of soften it up as well all right into the light into the pipe <laughs> into the darkness and into the light I wonder how long this um, pipeway is in the photograph it's fairly dark back here so, I mean, there has to be an opening on the other side, right? So, 
you know, we have to assume that this length here is fairly um, deep, otherwise you'd have this front lighting here, as well as the, uh, I don't know, I guess that's front lighting, as well as the back lighting here. But, uh, I don't know, it must be a pretty cool little area to go uh, kayaking through. It's kind of like the uh, adult version of kind of running through, you know, like one of those little, you know, play structures and going through it like that. There's these sea caves um, where you can go kayaking through in uh, San Diego. I've never been down there. I don't really kayak, but I do. I want to do some, uh, just some lake kayaking sometime. I actually got some, uh, you know, some you know, life jacket vests for uh, myself and my son, but we've never gotten around it. I was going to uh, organize a uh, outing for the Cub Scouts one time in our, in our den when I was a uh, Cub Scout leader, den leader, but I just never got around to it. Okay, well, I think that is it. Does that make for kind of an evocative visual statement there? I think I'll format this into a card. Um, I don't know, it seems, seems to be a... <laughs> Cards make things look so much better, uh, formatting them that way. So let me do that, and we'll see what we can come up with here in terms of a presentation. All right, we have our formatted card here. Um, I used a little bit of a white around the perimeter. No, I don't know. I, it would be better if this was gray, but I had um, a piece of uh, silver here. It'd be better if it was much darker silver, you know, to go with this, but... I thought that silver is kind of, I don't know, it kind of reiterates this idea that this is um, metal, um, steel, you know, going around in this. And then I, I don't know, I had a lot of room down here and I, I could have just cut this off and have the card, but I have this quote here. And I thought this quote was kind of cool to go along with this scene. It's, to the mind that is still, the whole universe surrenders. You would think that would go perfectly under a nighttime sky, but there is kind of this night, you know, dark area out here with these little dots and whatnot. It's kind of, um, I don't know, the same type of, um, oh, I don't know, whatever value texture configuration. And these concentric circles like that, you know, it's a little bit of this kind of star mapish type of thing, you know, these old stars out here. I don't know, but I don't know. If someone kayaking through that type of thing, there's something kind of rather contemplative. I, I don't know what the word would be, you know, going through something like that. Now, um, I don't know. One of the things I didn't do on this uh, piece was there was another kayak right here for the person taking the photograph. I didn't include that one in here because, you know, I don't have that. And I didn't want to draw it in, you know, just freehand, which, you know, someone could do or whatnot. But I don't know, there's something to just, I don't know, kind of the lone figure kind of going out into the uh, the great unknown or whatnot. That's kind of fun. So a little, and I don't know, the marriage of text and, uh, I don't know, visuals is always fun. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed the scene, the card, I don't know, the experiment, the configuration, etc and the various techniques utilized. I really had to kind of, you know, kind of weather this area in here. Otherwise it was a little bit too kind of, um, I don't know, extreme and two-dimensional. So this way, you know, when you go over it with all this different media and you kind of beat it down and, re you know, revive some of it with, you know, the white pen again and whatnot and add these little touches and, uh, I don't know, kind of weathering on there with, you know, the black pigment ink and whatnot. It kind of all, I don't know, blends together a little bit better. Better. I, don't know, I keep saying weathering, but it does look a little bit more weathered to me. And you can see some different tones in here, you know, with the, uh, the alcohol pens and whatnot, especially down here in the water. Look at that. I mean, that looks like water to me, with the, but it's a little white paint, uh, paint pen, you know you kind of add a little bit more in the lightness, right? And then in the darkness, you just do a couple little dots. That's three, four dots kind of in the dark areas. Just a little flash of light like that, and it makes it kind of shimmery and whatnot. All right, so anyways, thanks again for watching. If you like this video and channel, hope you give us a like. 
thumbs up, share, subscribe, etc., all that fun stuff. And we'll see you on the next card.